guys, welcome back to another video. Um, today, we're going to be answering this prompt right here. What is the average length of a chord on a circle whose radius r? Okay, and I drew a little picture. So here's a chord. It's just a line segment whose endpoints are on the circumference of the circle. Okay, and the radius of the circle is obviously r. Okay, so I highly recommend you guys to pause the video right now, or at any time, and just work through the problem. Uh, try and at least find an approximation if you can't find an exact solution. Okay? Alright, so let's see. What can we do? Well, let's first find a, a expression for the length of the line segment l. Okay, so this is going to be, what, the square root of r cosine alpha minus r sine, um, sorry, r cosine beta. Sorry, this is a little bit slow. Okay, um, and then you want to add that with r sine alpha minus r sine beta. And it doesn't matter if we switch the order or not since we're squaring it anyways. Okay, basically just use a binomial theorem. Okay, the interesting thing about this right here is, notice we have a cosine squared alpha and a sine squared alpha right here. We have a... Two co well, we ha and we have a cosine squared beta and a sine squared beta right here. We can use the identity to get this is 1, and this is 1, so altogether it's 2, plus oh, 2 minus, and we can actually factor it out, we can actually take this 2 outside of the square root to get an r root 2 of what? 1 minus cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta. Okay? Interesting. All right. What can we do with this? Here we go. I went ahead and factored out a negative one from this. Okay, look at this part. We can go ahead and use the angle difference identity for cosine, and we get r root 2 square root of negative cosine alpha minus beta plus 1. Okay, and I don't know why I factored the negative out, whatever. We just turned that huge thing in the beginning into this. Okay, what else can we do? We can go ahead and put the negative back in. Okay, so we get L is equal to R times square root of 2 times square root of 1 minus, oops, yeah, 1 minus uh, cosine alpha minus beta. I think I made a mistake here. Um, okay, so that's really cool. But now we have a thing for length, but we have two independent variables. We have alpha and we have beta. How do we take an average with two independent variables? Even worse, these variables are continuous. They can be any value from 0 to 2 pi, okay? So alpha can go from 0 to 2 pi. Uh, it doesn't really matter which we include or not. Uh, and beta can go from 0 to 2 pi, right? So how do we do that? Well, we actually take an integral, okay? So we take an integral from 0 to 2 pi, okay? And then we take another integral for beta, uh, alpha, and we take the integral of the length, and then for some d alpha, d beta, and then we want to divide by how many chords there are. So we just divide it by how many there are. So d alpha, d beta, like this. So here's our formula for the mean. All I have to do is follow through with it. This formula, we can go ahead and plug in what we got for L into our L here. What is this? Well, if you go ahead and just evaluate it, it's 1 over 4 pi squared, like that, okay? Okay, so we have what we need to evaluate, okay? Let's see, we can take this r squared of 2 because it's a constant unrelated to alpha and beta. We can go ahead and take that to the outside. So we can go ahead and get r root 2 over 4 pi squared. And I promise you there's going to be a relatively nice answer at the end. Uh, integral from 0 to pi. Integral from 0 to pi. Square root of 1 minus cosine. d alpha. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so what, why, didn't it, why didn't I include this stuff? That's because I want to do a little substitution right here. So here we have an alpha minus beta. That's sort of ugly. How about we have gamma? We're going to have gamma be alpha minus beta, okay? And because we're integrating with respect to alpha at first, d gamma, oops, I could write it better than gamma than that, d gamma is going to be equal to, um, sorry, d alpha minus zero, because we don't care about beta. So d gamma is equal to d alpha. And just like that, we went ahead and made the integral way easier to deal with, right? Because now we don't have this minus beta. So we got rid of that. And then, what can we do? Um, hmm turned gamma into alpha, we have to change these limits of integrations, okay? So let's do that. So let's see. When alpha is 0, what is gamma? Gamma is 0 minus beta, so it's negative beta, okay? When alpha is 2 pi, what is gamma? Gamma is simply 2 pi minus beta. So we have to change these limits of integration to be negative beta. Sorry for the messing error. Hopefully you guys can see that. And 2 pi minus beta, okay? We have this. To simplify our problem, change our limits of integration, everything seems all right. So now we have this one minus, square root of 1 minus cosine gamma to deal with. How can we deal with that? Okay, so one thing that we can do, if you know your trig identity is really well, which I don't, I have to Google this, but um, we know that by the half angle identity, sine 
of gamma over 2 is equal to the square root of 1 minus cosine gamma over root 2, okay? And then we can go ahead and move this root 2 to the other side to solve for 1 minus cosine gamma. There is a catch, however. This is only true if gamma is in between 0 uh, and pi over 2, right? Sorry, and 2 pi, what am I saying? It's only true if gamma is in between 0 and 2 pi. But right here, we see that gamma is in between negative beta and 2 pi minus beta, and beta is in between 0 and 2 pi, so that's not true. So that's a, but what is the thing for it when gamma is in between negative 2 pi and 0? What, is, what happens when gamma is negative? Well, it just turns out to be negative, so it will be square, and it's going to be negative right here. Okay? Uh, so these are the two cases. And how can we do that with our integral? We can split it up. So we can write, we'll write down our constant on the outside first. Integral from 0 to 2 pi. Integral from, this is negative, oops. Integral from negative beta to 2 pi minus beta. Okay, and we split it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some parentheses right here. Okay, and we split up the integral to be an integral from negative beta to 0 of the uh, 1 minus cosine gamma. Hopefully this is easy to follow along with. d gamma. And then uh, we're going to add the integral from 0 to 2 pi minus beta oops, uh, of the square root of 1 minus cosine gamma, d gamma. Okay, what can we do with this? Well, now we have it split it up into two cases, one where gamma is negative and one where gamma is positive. So we can substitute it in. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So now we can apply this formula, right? <laughs> so let's go ahead and apply the formula and plug it in, all right? There we go. And feel free to pause the video and check through to see if it all makes sense. Then we do a lot of steps. We take this gamma over 2. First things first, we take this uh, square root of 2 on both, move it out here, we multiply the square root of 2's here, and we get uh, 2r, and that divides with the 4. Okay, so we get r over 2 pi squared. And then we substitute theta in for gamma over 2, and that means 2d theta means uh, is equal to d gamma, okay? And then we go ahead and do some calculations to figure out our new limits of integration. Here's what we get, and then the 2 down here cancels out somewhere, uh, right here, okay? All right, so we have r over pi squared, and then we have these integrals. They're all relatively easy to calculate. Um, okay, so I went ahead and simplified it a little bit. So what can we do here? Uh, first of all, we can go ahead and split up the integral. There's three integrals. Uh, so we get r over pi squared times the integral from 0 to two pi of 2 d beta minus the integral from 0 to two pi cosine of beta over 2 d beta minus the integral from 0 to two pi of cosine of uh, pi minus beta over 2. Oops. Pi minus beta over 2 uh, d beta. And we can go ahead and do a nice little substitution. I'm sort of running out of Greek letters, so what can we use? We'll use delta, okay? Uh, there we go. So delta is going to be um, beta over 2, okay? And d delta is going to be, 2d delta is going to be 2d, wait, oops. d beta is going to be 2d delta, okay? So let's do that. So we get, okay, uh, let's figure out the limits of integration right now. Okay, so when beta is 0, when beta is 0, delta is also 0. We can just work this out in our heads. When beta is 2 pi, delta is just a singular pi. Sweet, succulent pi. Uh, okay. <laughs> and then, uh, okay, let's go ahead and calculate this. So um, we're going to get r over pi squared or pi minus 2 times something that goes from 0 to pi. What is that something? Uh, it's the antiderivative of cosine. The antiderivative of cosine is, in fact, mm, sine. Why? Because uh, the derivative of sine is cosine. Simple enough. Subtract 2. Yeah, sorry. I'm sort of all over the place, aren't I? 2, 0 to pi of cosine, pi minus delta, d delta. Um. Okay, and then, let's do this. Let's finish it off. And some of my markers are going down. That's always a nice sign to see. All right, so we get, ignore this, uh, we get r over pi squared times 4 pi, mm. times 4 pi, minus 2 sine gamma, uh, okay, okay, let's calculate this. Sine of pi, <laughs> what? Sine of pi is, this is 0, correct, 1, 0. So it is 0, and sine of 0 is 0. So 0 minus 0, this right here becomes 0, okay? So it's minus 0, which means nothing, okay? Minus 2. Integral from 0 to pi cosine pi minus delta d delta. Hopefully I'm not missing anything. Uh, 
Okay, guys, I actually made a mistake right here. Um, I forgot to change the limits of integration when I did a little substitution, uh, but it doesn't actually change the final answer. It's still correct. All it does is change the sign, and we all know that zero is equal to negative zero. So I, li I made a little mistake there, but it doesn't change the final answer. Uh, okay, we're on the home stretch. So we get r over pi squared for pi plus, okay, this right here, this exact expression, we already did. We did it a couple of steps back. We did this exact expression for um, plus 2 integral from 0 to pi of cosine delta d delta, except now we're using a sigma instead of a delta. So we can use the same sort of logic to see that this right here is a 0. And if you don't believe me, work it out yourself. So the plus 0 does not matter. We get this. The pi's cancel, uh, the pi squared and the pi cancel, so we get all over pi, and the 4 goes up, so we get 4r over pi. So. If you want to find the average length of a chord on a circle with a radius of r, it's the expression 4r over pi. Pretty simple. We did a lot of steps on the way, but I have a couple more challenges for you, okay? Thanks for watching this video. Uh, it's, it's probably going to be really long, so feel free to skip over and make it two times speed or whatever. Uh, hope you enjoyed this problem, and here's some extra challenges for you guys. Okay, so to find the average chord length on a sphere instead of a circle, so this time you may use three independent variables instead of two. Oh, uh, second challenge is uh, uh, average, oh god, I have horrible handwriting <laughs> on a whiteboard. You want to find the average chord length on a square. So this time we're using a circle, but try and find the chord length on a square.